My mother would be outside my room and she'd say, go outside and play. What's the matter with you? Go outside and play. And I'd say, it's boring out there. Type, 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 type. I was definitely a weird kid. I can't really talk about my first big break because I never really had one. I was nine years old when I started writing. I found this typewriter up in the attic and brought it into my room and I would be in there for hours typing little joke magazines, typing little stories, typing. Why, would I, why did I do that? I don't know. Maybe that was my first big break discovering this whole thing. When I was a kid, there were these great gruesome horror comics. Tales from the Crypt and the Vault of Horror. And I just loved them. They were bloody and gruesome. They were horrible and they all had very funny twist endings. And I just thought they were great. I used to read them in the barber shop. One day I brought home a couple of them. I bought them. And my mother stopped me at the door and she said, I'm sorry, you can't have these. And I said, why, what do you mean? She said, you can't bring these in the house. It's trash. I thought, oh, trash, I, this was this very important moment for me, I think. And this is a true story. I used to go to the barber shop to read these comics every Saturday. I'd get a haircut every Saturday. I had no hair when I was a kid, but I was very well read. I think I knew when I was nine that I wanted to be a writer. And at that time, after college, um, this was in the mid-60s, uh, I thought if you wanted to be a writer, you had to live in New York City. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio. So right after college, I moved to New York and moved, got an apartment in Greenwich Village, and I thought this is what you need to be a writer. My very first job in New York was making up interviews for movie and TV fan magazines. This woman had six movie magazines, and I would go in in the morning and she would say, write an interview with Diana Ross. Do an interview with the Beatles. And I would sit down and type, type, type and make up interviews. And this was, this was a very good job. It was very creative work because I had to make it all up. And I learned how to write really fast because I had to write two or three of them a day. And that was, my first, that was my first big break in New York. It didn't last very long, but that was my first job in New York. Becoming a scary guy and writing all these horror books and doing Fear Street and then Goosebumps. That's who I am, I'm the Goosebumps author. That was an accident. That was totally an accident. And I always tell, I always tell kids, uh, young people that, you know, mostly things that happen to you, you're gonna, it's an accident. You can't really plan a career. It almost always is an accident. I always just wanted to be funny and I came to New York wanting to write funny books and I did a, a humor magazine for 10 years for kids called Bananas and I just wanted to be funny. And then one day I was having lunch with a friend of mine, uh, Jean Fywell, who's an, an editor at, she was a publisher at Scholastic and she said, you know what, I need a good scary novel for teenagers. Go home, write a book for teenagers called Blind Date. And I was at that point in my career when I, you didn't say no to anything. I said, sure, no problem. I didn't know what she was talking about. What did she mean a scary book for teenagers? But I said, yes, sure, I'll do it. And I went ran running to the bookstore to see what other people were doing and figure out what that would be. I wrote this novel, Blind Date, and it came out a while later. It was a number one bestseller. I thought, wait a minute, what's going on here? A year later, I did another one for Scholastic called Twisted. And it was a number one bestseller. And I thought, wait a minute, I've struck a chord here. I've found something that kids really like. And I've been scary ever since. And I guess, I guess that was my big break. Oh, I did a terrible thing once. I was on a news program in Philadelphia. It was Sunday morning and I was on this news show and this woman, the anchor said, well, what, what advice would you give to young writers? And I said, well, we don't need any more writers. I think we have, <laughs> I think we have all the writers we need. And she was horrified. I mean, who would say a thing like that? I figured it was Sunday morning, right? No one was watching. But people do always ask me, and I always say, I never give advice to young writers because people who are going to become writers are like me. They know it. They know it at a very early age. 
and they don't need people telling them anything. They're going to write and they're going to keep writing just because they love it for some mysterious reason. And they don't need me to tell them to read or to keep writing. They don't need that. They know what they're doing.